What's up guys, just gonna update you on grub worm. We, uh, after talking to Jonathan this morning, I'm not gonna try to tackle the header job and uh, changing the downpipe tip and a bunch of that stuff in less than a week's time is basically what I have again, like we did the first part of the year. Our Black Friday sale is going on now and we are hammered with orders and I really need to prioritize getting that stuff out and since the car is not going to race anymore this year, it's just going to PRI. We're just going to fix these double slips where they had to be patched up at the track, clean that up, and he's going to take it to PRI like it is. He's got to get it back and clean it up, switch the windows, but he's not going to be taking any of the other parts of the car off before the show. So it's going to look like a race car. It's going to look like it did when it uh, run those times that it did. It's not going to look like uh, we rushed around and put some blingy parts on it just for the pri show so you see a lot of stuff like that when they find out the car is going to pri or they're trying to get one ready for a show they try to put the very best stuff on there and i really don't think that describes jonathan's personality he's not really worried about all that he's just worrying about winning and that's what he does i want to show you this this is part of a double slip you can see i've taken it out right there I want to show you how far this is coming apart just with the heat movement on this hot side. You can see, see the line where my thumb is, that's where this edge was. If you put that at the weld seam, that's how much engagement is in there right now. So basically that sucker was about to come apart right now. I'm gonna cut these out, get them on, and then he's gonna take the car back, and it's gonna go to PRI. After PRI, he's going to pull the motor apart, inspect the inside of it, make sure everything is good, or just see what everything is doing. If it's good, they'll put it back together. If not, he'll address whatever has to be done, and he's gonna send it back down here with a mock-up block where we can take our time and do something super nice on this thing for next season. Something that might not have to be redone again. So, and while it's here, we'll probably get the rear in it if they get it done. They're gonna do a wishbone and just update some other stuff before, I guess it'd be sometime in March, I guess will be the first big race. That's Texas 2K, I think. And then, uh. So he'll be testing in February. So we'll have plenty of time, in other words, to, to get all this stuff done without rushing through anything. Because that's, that's my biggest thing is I just, it can be done, but when you rush through stuff, it just, it's not done. There's always hindsight. You look back and wish you could have done something better or had time to think about doing it better. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna reflect on that like I did this year on some stuff that I did with this again. So let's cut these double slips out.
everything's off and just giving it a real good look here i will tell you something funny about jonathan he's got some pretty primitive ways and i told somebody in a message one time he's the type that if his car don't absolutely need it he's not gonna have it and i think it's kind of funny that he doesn't run a turbo flange gasket or rtv check this out Slick as it can be, right there. I'm gonna go over here and look at this turbo. There's no gasket on there either. That's how he runs it. And he says it don't leak. So normally, if it was my car, it'd be leaking like crazy. But for some reason, Grub Worm is just that awesome that you can bolt a streetcar fab flange and if anything that says something about donnie's flanges if any of you guys uh are using his flanges they are pretty flat now whenever i weld these things i weld it in a vise just like that I usually got aluminum foil on it or something like that to keep it from scratching the sides but other than that nothing has been done to this flange and it's so flat that it seals off with no gasket. So props to Donnie for that on the flange design. But anyway, I think that we're just gonna replace this whole run of stainless from this weld joint to here and from this weld joint to here, which is a solid piece. Like I said, we're gonna be updating the headers with billet collectors and so doing more of a spread port style adapter flange some stuff that's going to make the header itself stronger less likely to move and after seeing what these double slips did with just the nature of what grub army is with the really violent two-step and things like that i don't i don't know if i want to put these back in just for the headache that might cause him down the road and obviously when it comes back from pri we're going to be cutting the v-bands off moving the header collector a little bit more uh, forward and try to get some more hood clearance and stuff like that but for right now i think i'll just put a pipe in here and just decide what to do later so let's get this thing over on the bandsaw
So I got everything cut apart and cleaned up, ready for uh, putting the pipe back in. See, it just went around with the flapper wheel, got all the heat off the pipe, all the uh, junk on the inside, all the fuel and stuff, just so it'll weld nice. Went around and looked at all the wastegate gussets and no visible cracks, nothing that really needs attention. So we're good to go there. And see, there's the piece we took out. We can see it's moved like an inch right there. So talking to Jonathan yesterday about some stuff that had happened. Recently, the car went and got a bunch of sheet metal work done at Jared's garage. It looked awesome. Closed up all the big air gaps underneath the car. But to support that aluminum, he attached it to the bottom of the wastegate tubes and extended the wastegate tubes where it would come out through the aluminum. Well, Jonathan was up there practicing uh, the two-step uh, boost control and stuff before one of the races and one of the guys at Tick, you know, waved him to stop because it was about to rip the aluminum out from underneath the car being attached to the wastegate tube. Obviously the tube is gonna have some vibration just a little bit being hung down that low just from the stuff going through the pipes, but this was moving a lot. So, talking about that, we can relate that to what this pipe is doing. Take you over here and show you. So this pipe is aimed this way. The other pipe is aimed this way. When he's getting on the two-step, the pipe is trying to do that with the pressure of the exhaust. So when it's doing that, obviously the turbo can't move because it's bolted to the chassis. So the header being upswept and long primaries has a lot less holding force than uh, like a shorter downswept header or something like that. So it's allowing the header to move with the engine pulses or the fires of the two-step and allowing that pipe to go in and out, in and out of that double slip. Well, the hotter the stainless gets, the hotter you know, the more it's gonna come out and eventually it's gonna get where it's misaligned and it's just start pushing further and further out. And looking at that, that's exactly what has happened with this setup. You know, regardless of the fact the collectors are starting to swell up and we're gonna switch the billet and stuff like that, but it's just the perfect storm for the pipes to spread apart like that. So, we're not going to put any double slips back in there. We're just going to put the solid pipe back in there. And then when we revisit this, when he comes back from PRI, we'll probably do the headers out of 321 and might just upgrade the whole hot side to 321. That way it's a little bit more rigid with the heat. So going over here, I'll show you what header flanges we're going to use. This is from stainless headers. They have a bunch of different options. These are the stall adapter flanges. This will go to the cylinder head. Standard small block Chevy style. But it's got uh, the sunk in bolt holes here. And I've got one assembled right here to kind of show you how it works. So the one goes on the against the head and I've got the bolts in here so it don't come apart. Those screw into the cylinder head and then you have the flange is threaded. So you'll run bolts down through here and it makes the bolts diagonal on the porch. That gets them away from the port where you'll have, you ain't gonna have to be grinding the weld down and everything to get a bolt in like you do with this. This also allows you to have a big, we're going to two inch primary. So it makes the primary be able to be a lot bigger and there's a lot more material there whenever you're welding. It also, when you come over here, it also adds a third bolt, which is gonna be a big help with sealing that center section right there and not blowing the gaskets. So really cool design with, uh, I know a couple people make these 
but this is stainless headers versions and they always have really good quality products so this is what we're going to upgrade to on his car to make just everything better and if you look at the thickness here we're actually going to end up being a lot better than doing the adapter stubs that we had to do because a small block chevy the port you're not going to be able to get more than about an inch and five eighths as far as your side to side up and down so you can do an inch and three quarter pipe and you can squeeze it down to get in that hole but it's going to go down to an inch and five eighths and getting a bolt beside the weld and stuff like that you always end up having to you know manipulate it just a little bit to get it to work good so this is going to eliminate all of that this is what i kind of wanted to do the first time around but the time frame just wouldn't allow for it because this is this isn't something they keep in stock they actually had to machine these whenever i ordered them and i just uh i told them i was in a hurry for it but now we're gonna have time so now they're here just add it to the pile of stuff for grub worm so i'm gonna get this uh three inch piece cut get these pieces put in so he can get the car back so let's get to work
everything is put back together and we got the piece of the pipe welded in and he is ready for PRI besides a good detailed job. Pipes went in pretty good. Had to work on getting this back around where I cut it close to the 90 and it ovaled out really bad. So you can see me going around with pliers and tacking it every uh, like half inch or something all the way around the pipe. I even took the torch and turn the pipes a little bit yellow, make them look like we didn't just fix them before PRI. So when he brings it back, like I said, we'll go over everything and probably do 321 everything and just freshen everything up. I'm still gonna build that style of header, even though long primaries are kind of weak uh, as far as the movement and stuff. They're a lot weaker than a downswept header. I'm still going to build them like that because working on the car, getting the valve covers off and different things, it's just so easy for him with a header like that or design like that. I just got to get them a little bit lower so it gets a little bit further away from the hood. And we're going to get the billet collectors on there and just make everything a lot more rigid. We might even look at doing some type of support uh, tension rod, kind of like this. This ain't much, but this really helps the downpipe from being beat to death on the, on the frame rail. Might do something like that off the headers to the motor plate just to kind of help whenever he gets on that two-step from that trying to uh, push it apart. So thanks for watching, and he'll get this thing picked up probably in the next couple days, and we won't see it again until after PRI. So if you're at the show, go check it out. It's been road hard and put up wet, but it ran sixes, and that's what matters. LT junk, baby. <laughs>